I went on a, I did this on my own, but I shouldn't have. Um, I river, I was staged to a cervical cancer. I mean, um, diabetes, high blood pressure, pancreatitis, a um, lot of things. I just reversed all of them on my own. My only problem is for the last two months, I've had irregular spotting. Um, and I don't know if it has anything to do with the diet. I'm sorry. What What is the problem for the last two months? What, what is the problem? I Irregular it. vaginal spotting, like light bleeding. Light vaginal, light vaginal bleeding. Um, if, can I ask how old you are? Yeah, 51. 51. Um, then you absolutely, I know you probably don't like to tangle with the medical establishment, but God forbid you've got an endometrial cancer or something up there. You really need at least get a diagnosis, at least see a gynecologist, let her determine where that bleeding is coming from. And uh, assuming it's benign, you know, there's various things you can do. You may have a little polyp up there that just needs to be cauterized or something, but you don't want to overlook a cancer if it's there. So please get that diagnosed and treated properly, but good for you. What a great transformation you've done with all those other uh, 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 medical issues you had, but uh, do get a proper diagnosis on that bleeding. That's a bit worrisome in a 51 year old person. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, good luck. Thank you for that doctor. And next we have Shanti. Shanti, what is your question? Hi, Dr. Clapper. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. It was awesome and just so comprehensive, and I can't wait to be able to share this. Um, I spoke last night at your other talk, and I've been born and raised vegan or whole food plant-based. We didn't even use the word vegan because we didn't really know it when I was born 45 years ago, um, but I've enjoyed excellent health my whole entire life, uh, as well as my siblings and my whole family, and uh, now my nieces and nephews. So. Um, I just wanted to say what I really loved in your presentation was how positive you are about illustrating how much has changed over this amount of time, like in 30 years, because when I was a kid, there was almost nothing as far as health food stores or options. And it's come so far that one of the things I keep trying to focus on in outreach is there are a lot of people with a negative tone, like everybody I know, or the majority of people feel uh, like it's too much. So I think for anybody who's following this, it's really important, like as a nutrient to be very positive, which I like that plant positive term to keep moving, keep the momentum and moving forward. Because if you have a longer term view of how much has changed over the years, it, it really has come so incredibly far. I think Dr. Rao's uh, exponential calculation that we can make it to a vegan world by 2026 is accurate. So I'm just so appreciative of your work and I'm so excited to share this presentation because it's one of the best I've seen. And so my, last, my question would actually be in obviously your work, when you encounter like negativity around, oh, well, nobody will make those changes or people uh, are so set in their ways, like, do you have like a personal way that you kind of change the dialogue to be more positive? And I'm asking because of, of course, your uh, elder wisdom on having done this for so long. So thank you for any thoughts on that. Thank you, Shami. Um, homo sapiens, we're quite a species, aren't we there? Yeah. You know, the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the word sapien, you know, homo sapien, sapien means wise. Yes. It's, someone who's sapient is wise. Oh, yeah. Well, boy, that certainly doesn't seem to apply to our species. So how do we get people to change? You know, that is the $64 trillion question. Yes. Um, so um, I find that... Um, and you're probably well aware of this, people are even considered the issue uh, by coming in through one of three doors. They either have health concerns, obesity, high blood pressure, whatever. They suddenly become aware of the plight of the animals that they're paying yes. for having these wonderful animals having a throat cut. Or they understand that global warming is important and they got kids and grandkids. 
Uh, and so I listen to where their uh, their heart is, where their interest is, yes. and I you got to meet them where they're at. Yes. And um, if they, uh, you know, and and it, it, you got to be a bit of an artist here, and you can't be <laughs> credit. Don't show them the slaughterhouse pictures right away there. Right. Uh, right. But uh, but be sensitive. Uh, understand that you know they're coming from. You know we all grew up with our. The, with our favorite foods and our comfort foods. And, and it means daddy was wrong in serving me that steak. And they don't want, you got to respect right. that, you know, don't cross a bunch of wires, uh, but, but um, you know, try and accentuate the positive, like the old song says. And yes. uh, oh boy, yeah, I just had a, a lasagna last night that was to, to, to live for, you know, not to die for. <laughs> uh, and uh, really what was in it? You know, and then, you know, talk, we'll go in through the food door that way and Better yet, put the food in their mouth. Oh, I could eat that. Ooh, that, you know, the, you got to, yes. you know, that first inch is important, you know, yes. or you know, one comment about the planet, you know, that, uh, you know, that, def- you know, letting the forest come back would, would keep the ice caps from melting. Oh, really? So find out where they're at and have, have the facts to, uh, to support uh, their, their moving down that continuum a little bit. And once they open up to one aspect, of course, it all cascades in. Yes. So, um, so find their, their place of, uh, of interest and vulnerability and respectfully uh, coax them through that door to, uh, to adopt the, the bigger picture there. Thank you. That's wonderful. I have gotten a lot of people to transition and I'm always looking for new tips and help and resources because it always feels like it's not going fast enough, but yet so many people are working on it. I really feel so, so much hope. So thank you so much for this wonderful talk and blessings to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Respect is the key. Sherry says respect is the key. You bet it is. (laughs) All right, next we have Wendy. Wendy, what is your question? Hello, doctor. I'm calling in from Boca Raton. Hi. Hey, I'm a, Hi. I miss the conferences. I always went to them. And uh, I'm a Hippocrates health educator. So not to throw any bummer kind of thing in, but um, could you address the fact that Bill Gates has bought up much of the farmland in this country and he's a fan of GMOs. And then we also have the problem with fertilizer not being available for the farmers and the farmers, everything that it costs them to run their farm has quadrupled in price, which is making it harder for the farmers to grow produce. Um, I grow sprouts at home. I don't have a place to grow my own vegetables. So let's say six months from now, they're saying that they're potentially could be a produce shortage. And uh, so that's what I would like you to please address. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Wendy. Oh my, Uh, we got trouble right here in River City, Uh, no doubt. And what Wendy just said is uh, makes you despair. And uh, and these huge economic forces and environment and, uh, and the financial powers of B are not uh, aware, uh, it's so disheartening to uh, to go to these environmental conferences and not a word is mentioned about diet. And same thing, I don't know what, Bill Gates, I think, is aware of this, but uh, money is a very powerful uh, distorter of reality, what to do. Um, well, as the old Chinese proverb goes, you know, the opportunity, uh, uh, crisis and opportunity are the same word there. And uh, and so this, this crisis is going to come, uh, and there, there might be big produce shortages, and people are going to be complaining, and they're going to be calling into the talk shows, and they're going to be really distressed. They're going to be complaining to the produce manager at the Safeway. Um, well, that's a great opportunity to, to use that energy to say, listen, th- this farmland could be growing food for people. And, and uh, really go to the AFA, the Agricultural Fairness Line. They've got programs to help this transition happen. And, and there are some Congress people um, who are open to this, Cory Booker, and there's a, a couple of vegan congressmen there. Um, so uh, we are hitting the, the, the dregs of this. And, the, and that's a really scary prospect that you've outlined there. Uh, we need to use that energy, call into the talk shows, call your congressman, write them the letters, 
uh, join the AFA and, and we got to take, you know, it's like turning an ocean liner, but we got to take our food production system and lurch it over to, to uh, sustainable plant production. And, and the, I'm not an agricultural economist, but I'm sure the economics, uh, again, because you can grow so much more food on that land than just grinding out corn and soybeans, um, that that very shortage of the produce is going to potentially drive energy towards growing more produce. And so uh, it, it's going, we were in for some rocky times that we've created on our, you know, we brought it on ourselves. But here's the time not to despair. Um, use your use your platform to point out over there, support the, the produce farmers, and uh, and hopefully you know they 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 suddenly they locate an extra half billion in the budget there. So um, so do what you can to be the voice for the for the land and for the animals and for the uh, and for the healthy foods and ask and we shall receive. We've got to assume that. Okay, and lastly, so organizations that we could uh, get involved in would be the AFA and probably the PCRM has to and do with legislation. What else? Yes, and the climate healers. Go to those three and uh, you'll, you'll find plenty of resources in all three. And go to Extinction Rebellion and uh, they've got political tools there. Awesome. Okay, thank Grow Sprouts at Home. And grow sprouts at home. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks, Randy. Take care. Thanks, for that, uh, Dr. Clapper. Next, we have David. David, what's your question? Yes. Um, I had two quick questions. One, when concerning chia seeds, is it necessary to soak them or can I just grind them? And the other is, when concerns washing produce, can I just wash them water for five minutes and then do another five minutes? Or do you think it's important to add a tiny bit of baking soda? When washing produce? Yeah, those two good questions. I never grind my chia seeds. I just throw them on. They're just in the jar there. Uh, and if someone is a chia seed expert and should tell me why I should be soaking or grinding them, please let me know. But I'm a, uh, but I just, yeah, I just, uh, they're, they're so tiny. I just eat those chia seeds. Um, and the whole washing produce thing, you know, can you can you wash pesticides off? I, th I think Dr. Gregor's latest is, there really isn't much you can do to get the pesticides off. You should wash them anyway. Uh, there are bacteria uh, on the surface there. And uh, uh, and would a little baking soda help? Probably would make it more alkaline water. And yeah, I wouldn't have any problem with that. So wash the produce, but it's, it's getting the microparticles of dirt, microplastics, and bacteria off there, not the pesticides. You want to buy the organic produce, pay those farmers handsomely for not using the pesticides pesticides, et cetera, but then wash that organic produce under, under running water or dip them into a bowl of water that you put in a, a little pinch of uh, bicarbonate or baking soda. I think that's a good idea. So wash your produce, but and buy you organic think, ones. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's important to soak nuts and seeds before you eat them and use a dehydrator? Um, I'm a big fan of soaking nuts and seeds. It activates the enzymes that, um, that kind of pre-digest them. Uh, and, um, and, and I love the taste and texture of almonds that have been soaked. They're sweet, crunchy. I really like them. And as I said, it activates the enzymes that start pre-digesting the sugars and starches in there. So, um, so I'm a big fan of, of, and I like soaking sunflower seeds. Uh, most dried fruits we soak overnight, figs and apricots, we soak them. So I'm a big fan of, of soaking these uh, at least for a couple hours, if not overnight. So, and, then you, uh, mm -hmm. and then use a dehydrator or no? Uh, I like the dehydrators are they're fun. Um, and I like sun dried tomatoes out of the out of the dehydrator there. And uh, uh, and I'm a big fan of dried apple slices and banana slices. I love you know dried fruits. Um, so yay, uh, enjoyed them. Uh, don't eat too many of them, but enjoy them. Yes, they're, they're a good thing they have. All right, soak at least two hours though for most things. Yes. yes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>